Hey everyone, welcome back to Bold Faith Bible as we finish up the the book of Romans. Um, this last chapter has some exciting tidbits in it. Um, sometimes when we come to a book of the Bible or a section of the Bible that looks like a list, we're tempted to skip over it. But like so much of Scripture, um, if we do a little bit of digging, we'll find those nuggets of gold. I do apologize once again that I, I got behind this week on my uh, teaching, and so this is coming out Sunday instead of the usual Wednesday or Thursday nowadays. But uh, let's jump into Romans chapter 16, starting in verse 1. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church, which is at Centria, that you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and that you help her in whatever matter she may have need of you. For she herself has also been a helper of many, and of myself as well. In Scripture, we are commanded to love all and to serve all, but we're told to especially serve and love those who are servants of others, those who are within the church, the assembly of saints that are serving others other people. Some folks today have have separated themselves from a physical gathering of believers, uh, and uh, they say, I don't need that. But the true thing is that what we truly need is that opportunity to serve others. Here, um, Phoebe has actually uh, served so many people and has been a blessing to so many people that Paul is especially asking them to take care of her and make sure that she has what she needs for her ministry or to get set up there in Rome. It is a huge blessing to be a servant of someone who has served others because it's almost like you get to share in their reward. Jesus says that those who um, receive a prophet in a prophet's name uh, will receive a prophet's reward. And it's just that idea that that when we are partners in a ministry financially or uh, serving along with, that you truly do you become a participant of it. You become a, a true partner in that ministry. And so here they're encouraged to become partners in Phoebe's worthy ministry. Verse 3, greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who for my life risked their own necks, to whom not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. And this is so true. Uh, Prisca and Aquila, um, or Priscilla and Aquila, um, they're called different names in different places, um, but we see them pop up all throughout the New Testament because they are very bold for the gospel. They are almost like Paul. Uh, they don't write scripture, but they, they're out there planting churches all over the place. Uh, we first see them in Corinth, because they had um, fled Rome, or they were from Rome, and they were in Corinth, they heard the gospel there, um, the the updated gospel. They were already uh, teaching uh, the the word, but they then had to uh, um, learn what was actually going on with the gospel, right? And then they uh, about Jesus, and so they then went all the way back to Rome by now. And Paul uh, is, sees them very much as partners, and they are leaders in the church in Rome. Uh, they have risked their lives and their necks for Paul to minister to him, and that is something that is not uh, something to take lightly. All right, verse 5. Also greet the church that is in their house. Greet Apeonitis. Um, my beloved, who is the first convert to Christ from Asia, um, which would have been his first um, missionary journey, right? So quite a while, and one of the first believers has made his, right, his way to Rome as well. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Again, commendation for those who, who serve hard, who work hard, for the cause of the kingdom and the gospel. 
So many people are content to uh, count the spoils of their salvation, but they do not look to further the kingdom. Verse 7, Greet Adronicus and uh, Junaeus, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are outstanding among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Which means that they were believers uh, back in the Jerusalem area, back before Paul was converted. Verse 8, Greet uh, Apliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, uh, our fellow worker in Christ, and Stachus, my beloved. Greet Apellus, the approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household of Aristobus. Bullus, sorry. Um, 11. Greet Herodian, my kinsman. Greet those in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. What is Paul doing here? Why is he listing so many people? Remember, Paul has never actually been to Rome. So he's never actually been part of that church. And so he has to kind of name drop a little bit to let them know that he knows people there. Greet Tryphania and Tryphosa. Workers of the Lord, greet Persis, the beloved, and uh, who has worked hard in the Lord. Verse 13, we see a very interesting character. Greet Rufus, a choice man in the Lord, also his mother and mine. Hmm. Interesting. He seems to indicate that he has some connection to this Rufus and a choice man in the Lord. Singles him out for special commendation, special mention. Why is that? Well, let's flip over to Mark uh, chapter 15, verse 21. We will see an interesting passage here uh, of someone else named Rufus. Is it the same guy? Quite possibly. Many people believe it is. Verse 21. Speaking of Christ being uh, about to be crucified, they pressed into service the passerby coming from the country, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander, and Rufus to bear his cross. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, we, we see this connection there, and... Uh, there's one other place uh, I forget off the top of my head. Um, it says that he's a Cyrene, um, and another place actually makes a connection there too. It's not necessarily the same guy, but it seems like it might be. Verse 14. Greet Asicritus and Philegion, Hermes and Patrobus, Hermas and the brethren with them. Greet Philogus and Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. You may ask, how do I know all of these names? And uh, if you're following along very closely, you may have picked up on it. Uh, when you're reading Bible names, whether they're Hebrew names or whether they're Greek names, uh, that's not a first language for most of us. So, just try. <laughs> try and do so confidently. And generally speaking, not many people will call you out unless it's a really familiar name. But uh, so uh, we're all learning and uh, there's so much more to learn. And when it comes to Greek and Hebrew names, they can be really tough. So uh, don't worry about it. We're all struggling with them as well. Verse 17, now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you have learned and turn away from them. So we have this, uh, we're away from the list, right? And we're back to getting some practical advice here. We're going to have a couple more people mentioned, but, but this is going to be mostly practical advice from here out. He's calling them to remember to watch out for people who cause dissension, people who stir up trouble. Uh, 
We always know those people. Um, they're always the ones who have some gossip to share about somebody. They they always seem to be at the center of every controversy. You know, it's like it's like they flock to it. Or more often than not, they're the ones who caused it. Right? There are people who cause trouble, uh, and you should keep your eye on them <laughs> because that's probably where dissensions are going to start or. If you keep your eye on them, they will lead you straight to the dissensions. Um, so it's just, we, we need to build communities full of people, and sometimes people are troublemakers. And it doesn't mean that we don't love them, but it does mean that you need to not trust them too much. Uh, we can love people without trusting them too much, and... When we know people are prone to certain things, you want to keep them away from those things as much as possible, and you want to keep them on a little bit of a short leash. You don't let a recovering alcoholic go wandering around an alcohol store because that's called stupid. Um, you don't uh, tempt somebody, and you don't uh, give people too much uh, freedom when when they need to have some accountability in their lives. Uh, people who struggle with community and disrupting community, you need to keep an eye on them and uh, make sure they're not doing too much damage. And hindrances contrary to the teaching which you have learned. Um, those who cause hindrances, right? They, they don't just stir up dissension and issues. They also will... Uh, teach things that they ought not to or say things that they ought not to. Uh, they will tell people uh, certain doctrinal things with great confidence that are not true, and you have to keep an eye on them, right? Uh, verse 18, For such men are slaves not to our Lord Christ, but of their own appetites, and by their smooth and flattering speech they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. So those who aren't paying attention, those who aren't grounded in the Word of God, uh, may be taken uh, taken up by that. They may be deceived by what they are hearing or what they are uh, learning from these people. Verse 19, For the report of your obedience has reached to all. Speaking of the church in Rome, everyone has heard that there is a church in Rome. Uh, Therefore, I am rejoicing over you, but I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. That is the the original sin, this this temptation to want to be wise in evil as well as good. We all like to be in the know. We don't like to be ignorant of things. But there are some things we should be ignorant of. There are things that we should be um, pure from. Things that the experience of them corrupts us. There are sins which we are not to commit or uh, delve too deeply into. There are things like the occult. There are things um, that outside of wedlock um, that ought not be explored. We ought not to be seeking to be wise in these things that we ought not to have any business with. Verse 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Speaking of the occult, um, it is not our place to rebuke Satan or his demons. In fact, we need to regard uh, our place in the created order where we are, for now, lower than the angels and the demons who are over us. We need to realize that it is God who will crush them, who will punish them, and we ought not to um, overstep our place in things. Uh, sometimes you see these things where people are bossing around demons and such like that, and that is a scary place to be. You are not anything compared to them. They are in a place of authority over us. doesn't mean you do what they say. If they're counseling you to do something evil or something like that, you don't do what they say, but you need to do, you need to interact with them with humility and you need to appeal to Christ. You need to pray to Christ. You need to appeal to God, not try taking on things yourself. Because once again, you and I are nothing 
without Christ. And don't use the whole, well, I have Christ, so therefore I can't. No. If you have Christ, Christ can. <laughs> okay? And Christ does what Christ uh, chooses to do. You need to pray to him, not take things on yourself. Um, we need to be bold, but we also need to be wise. It is God who triumphs, not us. Uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. That's a blessing that he often puts there. Now, there's a few other people he wants to mention. But these are people on his side, generally speaking. Verse 21, Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you, and so do Lucius and Jason and Cispater and my kinsmen. I, Tertius, who write this letter, greet you in the Lord. So it's not saying that this isn't from Paul. What he's saying is that I'm the guy actually doing the writing. Paul is speaking to me, right? And so Tertius is like, I'll put my little note in here too. Me too. Verse 23, Gaius, a uh, host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, greets you. And Cortus, the brother. Verse 24, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Verse 25, now to him who is able to establish uh, you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret for long ages past. But now is manifested, it's revealed, right, by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, has been made known to all the nations, leading to obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, for the be the glory forever. Amen. So let's back up there. Uh, now to him who is able, Christ, to establish, verse 25, to establish uh, you according to my gospel. Christ can take you, believing in the gospel, and make you saved, right? Uh, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. What is the mystery? The mystery is that all people can be saved now, that even the Gentiles can now join into this fellowship of being in the kingdom of God, not just the Jews, right? Uh, which has been kept secret for long ages past. It wasn't revealed. It was secret. Uh, verse 26, but now it's manifested or open to everyone. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, has been made known to all the nations. That's what Paul's doing. He's going out to all the nations and saying, everyone can now be saved. Everyone can enter into this relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And that's what we have here. Thank you so much for joining me with this uh, study in the book of Romans. Please feel free to drop any comments or prayer requests down below. I also have my email at boldfaithbible at gmail.com if you care to email me directly. God bless you all. I hope this has been a worthwhile study of your time and in the Word of God. Have a great day.